Hello, this is David with Santan Solar, your one-stop shop for all your solar needs. And today I'm going to be putting up a very simple and basic uh, solar power system. Now I'll be using a charge controller, as you see back here, and then I'll be connecting it to some panels, which I have outside, and then it'll be connected to a battery, an AGM 12-volt battery system, and then I'll be attaching a uh, inverter, a 12-volt, 2,500-watt inverter. And this will just give you the basics and the order in which these items are connected and just some a few extra tips and uh, different methods of connecting these. There's a variety of equipment out there that you can use that will be able to make the connections a lot easier. And I'll be showing you some of that in this video. So what I'm gonna do is the first, the first step we're gonna do is be connecting our 12 volt AGM battery to our charge controller. Um, typically, I'm gonna be using bus bars. Using bus bars makes it a lot easier for connecting devices uh, to and from. That way, you don't always have to unscrew them from these terminals. You can just put them directly to here and then the other devices can attach to this and then you can remove it just from here rather than having to go here and unplug it all the time. So uh, bus bars really help out in that and that you can hook up multiple devices without stacking connections one on top of the other. So this makes it a little cleaner, a little safer. Uh, these are like uh, 300 amps, so these can definitely take whatever, whatever this has, okay? So we'll use that. And of course, going from the um, charge controller to your battery, you wanna be sure you're rated for this. This one has 100 amps, uh, so you'd probably wanna use something like a 125, a 150. I got a 150 right here, so I'll be using that in, in, in the, for here because uh, you can go up to like a 125 is what would be recommended for 100 amp. You always wanna just step it up a little bit more so that way you don't have to have a nuisance, uh, you know, this thing tripping all the time. So what you wanna do is you wanna go just a little bit more than what the amperage is here. Uh, you can do that by taking this and multiplying it by 1.25 and uh, that'll give you a reading of the, the appropriate amperage for your breaker or fuse. If using a charge control of this size, you would typically be using two gauge wire. That's the recommended size wire that you would use for this particular unit if you're gonna be hooking it up for a potential of 100 amps. This particular size wire would be recommended and it's the largest that'll fit these ports. Now for our purposes, we're not gonna be using the, potent the full potential of this unit. So we're using four gauge wires down here uh, to connect to our battery bank via the uh, bus bar. But if you're gonna be connecting this to a much larger system that we are using, um, you would definitely want to use two gauge wire as that would be the, the best wire to use uh, for this particular unit. Once the charge controller has been turned on and has half power from the battery, one of the main things I will do is then check to make sure that I can make communications with it with my app. And you can see here I'm connecting into the Victron Connect. It's going to load up. As you can see, the charge controller is registering the connection. And from here, I can go ahead and look at the status inside the uh, charge controller. Another item that we uh, mentioned earlier was having disconnects. Well, we could put a disconnect here on our battery to the bus bars. Now, because we have other devices that are already attached to the bus bar and they already have their own disconnects, we can go ahead and add um, our own device, such as this 350 amp, 1000 volt uh, switch. It'll take that battery that we just showed down below and isolate it from everything else that's up there. So this way we can do that. We can isolate it from the bus bar and we'll just be placing it on the hot just like that. So now that we have our charge controller up and running, uh, connected to our battery and we show that it's it's reading the battery properly, we're able to connect it to our phone. They'll be able to make further uh, adjustments with our phone now if we need to. Also, uh, the next step here is we're going to be attaching some solar panels to this and uh, we're going to be showing how that process works so that we can make sure that this charge control can read from the solar panels and also take that same power using its MPPT protocols and, and, al and uh, algorithms so that it can go ahead and charge our 12 volt battery. So as you can see, I have three 250 watt panels. I think one of them is a 255 watt panel. I have them done in series 
and that's what I'll be attaching to my charge controller and we'll be able to see if there's going to be enough power, which I believe there will be. These things will be putting out about 30 plus volts a piece, uh, if not a little bit better, and that should be more than sufficient to uh, run through the charge controller as well as to charge up our batteries and supply enough uh, power when we attach our inverter. So here I have my voltmeter. It's set for DC power. I'm going to be checking the voltage coming off my small array that I have out there. My, I have a three panel array and I just want to make sure that the voltage coming through is going to be adequate. And basically what I'll do is I'll just take my probes here and then go ahead and, and measure the voltage. So at this point, my panels are bouncing around between 104 103.9 volts is what it's putting out, which is excellent. Uh, it's a great sunny day. It's cooler weather. Cooler weather, of course, always translates to a better performance since the panels do not have to absorb heat. Okay, so what we got here is got my multimeter. I'm going to be checking the DC voltage from my small array that I have here, making sure that it's well within the range of my charge controller, which will then help me charge my batteries. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and test it. Put my probes in here, go right here, and of course I'm going to about 104 volts for just those three panels. So I'm doing really well with those panels. They're used panels, but they still produce quite, quite well. The next thing I'm going to be checking here shortly is that is the current. And uh, with that, I'll be using a, uh, a clamp meter in order to do a much more accurate and safer check. Now, as I explained earlier, what we do is in order to check the amps, my arrays out there. I can just go ahead and put my uh, unit together like this. There's no fear of it shorting out or anything like that. I've already have my meter set and then what I'll do is I go ahead and then make a clamp. Put it around there and I can see what I'm drawing here. It looks like I'm drawing about um, I'm doing about 8 amps but between 7.9 8 amps. So that's pretty good. Now that I'm going to be hooking up my array to my charge controller, there's a few things, the methods of which you can do this with. Uh, a lot of people will use something like this, which is the uh, HT5 uh, five-way box, and you can put a one or two, maybe even three um, breakers in here so that you can have like three or three strings that can go right into here. This is awesome, you can do that as well, and that way you don't have to use like uh, so much as a combiner box. Uh, combiner boxes will be done if you have to have a large system with a larger voltage or what have you combiner box makes sense in which then you can run it your two wires to this as you're on an off switch the other method is of course using this thing here this is primarily a, uh, a dc disconnect for your array this is actually uh you'll run things from a combiner box through here if you have and it'll come out it'll come to this part at which point it'll then pass through onto the charge controller and this will be the on off switch for that array this is fused so it should it can take up to like a um, I think it's a thousand volts or something like that. It can take quite a bit of voltage for this. So you don't have to do too much with this as long as you stay within its parameters and it can take quite a bit. And it is fused as well. So that this way, if there's any problems, this will also be a safeguard for your uh, charge controller. Perf uh, personally, I do like using these. They're much more simpler to use. This, you, you do have to do a little bit of configuration, a little installation of your breakers to make sure you have the right size breakers for your system. So now we have our photovoltaic DC switch mounted. Uh, we are ready to go ahead and attach our solar panels to the top, and then we're gonna have our lead wires coming out in the bottom and make our connections here to the uh, charge controller. Uh, for doing that, you will need to have something that'll have um, uh, some MC4 connectors on one end, so that when you attach it to your DC uh, switch, you can then take the other end, and I prefer to put ferrules on for sometimes, uh, for something like this, this is a small system, so using ferrules like this, uh, is probably going to be helpful. It doesn't make the ends fray up. And uh, since they're ridged, they really grip on tight inside these uh, connections inside the charge controllers. And it just makes it easier and tidier when you have to make changes. If you have to make a longer one or what have you, you can still use the MC4 connectors to extend it out if you need to. 
and uh, that way you don't have to keep pulling your wires uh, in and out all the time. And it just makes it easier. Uh, so that's what I like to do for this, and that's what we'll be doing for this little connection here. And then we'll show you how the panels will be hooking up. We'll test them out, and then we move on to connecting our inverter so that the whole system can be complete and we can run our appliances. Always try to do a little tug test, make sure these won't come out. You will take the positive, plug it in. You will take your negative, plug it in as well. So now we're connected to our DC switch, and then we're gonna go ahead and make a connection right here to our uh, top so we can make sure that the panels are connected and then we'll turn it on and do a little voltage test to make sure we are have continuity. Okay, we have everything connected up. We have our, our panels are now connected to our DC switch. Our charge controller is now connected to the DC switch and the battery is, is still connected from previously. We are now, first things we had to do is turn on the battery. So I'm gonna be turning that on to our Victron charge controller. All right, it's up and running. It's looking good. Then we turn on our panels. And as we turn on the panels, it's going to start registering this. We do have a bit of a cloudy day, a partly cloudy day, so we won't get a tremendous amount of voltage out of this, but it should be just enough here, or just enough uh, voltage so that we can go ahead and get our battery charged up. Okay, it's reading the batteries right now. It's in bulk charge right now, and it's already uh, putting in a voltage to the battery. It's going to be settling down, and it's going to absorption. And as it continues on, it'll probably go down to float here a little bit because it has enough power here that uh, it's reached, the battery's overreached at their maximum. So it'll just sit here and idle. Otherwise, we're all set. Next thing is gonna be attaching the uh, inverter. And uh, that process here, we'll go ahead and mount the inverter up here. It'll be a 12 volt, uh, 2500 watt inverter. And that way we can get it connected and then start running our appliances. 